Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. It's Knott's Berry Farm. For nearly 80 years, it's been delighting visitors of all ages from all over the place. And it's not only one of my favorite places on Earth, but also a place I've always been fascinated with. So today, I've come to the north side of Knott's Berry Farm here to jump back in time. And we're going to do that today right here on the corner of Beach Boulevard and La Palma Avenue. The major intersection from which most people appear approach Knott's Berry Farm and see this large sign here welcoming them. With this old prospector and his mule up here. This is the modern view where the theme park is just on the other side of this huge wall right here. But prepare to jump back in time more than 50 years. Because we're gonna head all the way back to the 1960s looking at this very same intersection from roughly this very same view. Look at how completely different looking that is. Okay, obviously the first thing that you're going to notice are those amazing tail fins on that car right now, but a couple of other things strike me. Look at up there on that pole, the light pole. Do you see that marker for Highway 39? There's still a green marker there today, but look back at that old classic black and white highway marker. That's amazing. Then of course to the right, we have the old Prospector and his donkey, the old original concrete version much lower to the ground that would have greeted visitors coming down Beach Boulevard headed towards Knott's Berry Farm. First, what sticks out to me about this time traveling is how much things have stayed the same. For example, that bank back there, it's virtually identical looking from the 1960s all the way up until today. I also think it's very cool that they've kept the prospector and his old burrow as sort of the mascot here on the corner. Now, the original version of that was made in concrete and it was sculpted by a guy named Claude Bell, the same guy who sculpted those peewee dinosaurs. A close look at the miner shows us that it's not the same one from the 1960s, but the donkey looks virtually identical. So, I don't know, maybe some of it is original after all. Either way, as cool as that old photo is, it's not the only view I have of this intersection from back in the past. Today on this north side of the intersection, we've got some claim jumpers over here. A claim jumper restaurant taking up the whole corner. But back in 1956, this was actually a pottery store. You could pull up your car right here. Hop out and get yourself some ceramics, maybe a nice vase for grandma. Look at that. It's just a few frames. But what an incredibly cool piece of footage. And in the background, if we step back in time just a little bit more than 60 years ago, you can clearly see the old Knott's Berry Farm sign with the old original prospector greeting visitors. What a cool spot to sell some pottery and ceramics. Too bad these claim jumpers came and took over this whole corner. It sure did look mighty fine back in the 50s. And by the way, before we move on across the street, you'll notice that behind this wall today is Camp Snoopy. Not to mention a huge wall keeping out uh, unwanted visitors from Knott's Berry Farm. But if you look back at that old photograph I showed you, you'll notice that behind the miner back in the day was simply parking lot. That's right, almost this entire area that's now Camp Snoopy, this whole area off the street here, was a parking lot. And there was no giant Great Wall of Knott's Berry Farm like there is today, because back then, getting into Knott's Berry Farm was free. All you had up against the street was that old prospector and a low fence, kind of like this one across the street. With simple grass and dirt parking. It's crazy that there's still some of that left, even though this used to be an alligator farm. But that's a story for another time. Let's go across the street. Because we got some farming to do. Today, I've parked my car in the massive Snoopy and Friends parking lot across the street from Knott's Berry Farm. You take an underpass under Beach Boulevard to get to this parking lot. And this underpass was here back in the day too because it's on my old vintage Knott's Berry Farm park map. Now back in the 1950s, that parking section we just came from was simply known as sections 6 through 11. Not too much going on today in the area that leads to that underpass, but in 1956, thanks to Gary Cooper, we can see what the sign leading to that parking lot area look like and look underneath it. Look what's parked down there. Those are the old Knott's Berry Farm cable cars. These were a very famous Knott's Berry Farm staple. Some of them were actual San Francisco City cable cars. And back in the 1950s, they were some of the first things you would see here because they were right up against the parking lots. A look at the old maps will show you that there actually used to be two cable car rides. One of them went around the parking lot in the area that's now Camp Snoopy and the other one was out here 
across this street, the one right out in front of Knott's Berry Farm called Grand Avenue that separates the main park from this little shopping area over here. Nowadays, behind the stores on this side of Grand Avenue, there's nothing to see here but temporary one hour and employee parking. But back in the day, you would have been able to ride a cable car through this parking lot way over there to an attraction called Henry's Auto Livery, which was way back over there, up against Beach Boulevard. So you were riding in little old timey cars right up against that modern Highway 39. Now for me, the area outside the fences of Knott's Berry Farm has always sort of looked more or less like this. Just a simple little shopping area, not too much going on. It's crazy to think that before there even was a fence, the ride started way out here. And that you would have seen San Francisco cable cars running up and down alongside of one of the busiest streets in Orange County. What a cool piece of footage. Remember that Knott's Berry Farm started out as an actual working berry farm that then later sold chicken dinners at Mrs. Knott's Chicken Dinner Restaurant and of course lots of berries and berry related products and other produce at the Berry Market. And all of the attractions at Knott's Berry Farm originated as free things to entertain customers waiting in really long chicken dinner lines. And they started out very simply like the attractions behind the Berry Market like this diorama of the old mill stream or this replica of George Washington's fireplace at Mount Vernon. These have remained almost completely unchanged since the 1940s. And they're still here at Knott's Berry Farm today, hidden behind the berry market along with another one of Walter Knott's earliest creations here, the Rock Garden. Now I've showed you guys this Rock Garden before and told you how underneath all this ivy it's actually constructed out of real volcanic rock that Walter Knott hauled in himself from the Mojave Desert. I've also told you that it looked a lot different in its heyday and now I can finally show you because on September 14th, 1963, some very thoughtful, very helpful person snapped a photo of this waterfall as it looked in its prime. Now for nerds like me, that is awesome. You can still see this rock here in that photo. You can see a lot more volcanic rock around the waterfall and you can see how there used to be many different kinds of plants alongside of it. Nowadays, there's pretty much just one kind of plant growing out here in what's basically a greenhouse. It is very hot and humid and I will now be sweating for the rest of the day. It's hard today to imagine why it would be so hot and humid in here until you see that old picture and realize that there used to be Lots of jungly plants growing back here. Tropical, jungly, desert volcano. That's why it impressed the visitors. It is amazing that this waterfall is still here. I hope they never rip it out. In fact, I actually hope they kind of restore it to its former glory because it definitely looked a lot more exciting and tropical back in the day. Ooh, at one point, they also had some rare birds in here. They had a live beehive over in this corner to show you, you know, the birds and the bees, I guess. And Walter Knott's son, Russell, also had a rock display that was located roughly where this door is behind that way. And the shelves are actually still back there along the side of this building in what's now an employees only area. Gives you an idea of how simple some of the early attractions were out here. I talk more about them, but I don't have pictures of those right now. And also, I am starting to glisten and sweat. And it's about 100 degrees in here, so uh, let's go. Oh, air conditioning. Now, one thing about that chicken dinner restaurant is it kept growing and growing and growing. Eventually becoming, and I believe it still is today, the largest chicken dinner restaurant in the world. This whole building is still huge because they kept on having to add more and more dining rooms. And eventually the restaurant stuck so far out into the farm that from the very back windows of the restaurants, customers could see a very large standpipe, a large irrigation pipe from the windows of the restaurant. And Walter Knott came up with a very creative solution to solve the problem of the unsightly pipe. He went back out to the Mojave Desert to an old volcano, loaded his truck up with volcanic rock and created this the Knott's Berry Farm Volcano. A lot of people argue that this was the very first Knott's Berry Farm attraction because in addition to the actual volcano, there was a wooden case with a moving little figure in there, old Nick, AKA the devil, turning the crank and making that volcano go. There was actually more than one Knott's Berry Farm volcano, meaning that the volcano was moved and added to at least once in its history. That's the origin of the volcano, Volcano 1.0, but when it was reconstructed, it was even mightier and in a new location. And if you follow the old maps to where that volcano was, it leads you almost in a straight line back from the side of Virginia's gift shop to this modern area where there's a little nook in the Knott's Berry Farm fence and they've constructed a 
fire pit. Now this fire pit is pretty cool. At night there's flame coming out of this thing, but nothing can match the awesome power of that Knott's Berry Farm volcano. It was here for years and years. Finally, it was demolished in order to build this giant Ghost Rider roller coaster over here. Because before that, there was all kinds of fake rock work in this area. All part of the old Knott's Berry Farm gold mine, but we'll get to that when we're inside the park. Now check out these old volcano photos. These photos are both from 19 56 and if you look up at the top of the volcano you can see the steam coming out of it but I think my favorite part of these pictures is how clearly you can read that sign only active volcano in Southern California moved in from the Mojave Desert complete and has been erupting faithfully ever since oh come on guys how cool is that owning your own volcano now I was extremely psyched to get these old photos but I was completely blown away when I was sent this Look at this old footage of the volcano. It's just a short little clip and there's no sound obviously, but this gives you some idea of how cool looking this volcano was made of real volcanic rock and spouting up steam. Like I said, fire pits are always cool, but not as awesome as that volcano. Hey, maybe someday they'll build another one. All right, now keep in mind that everything we've looked at so far, you can still see outside of the gates of Knott's Berry Farm. But one other thing that you would have definitely seen before entering the park is still here at Knott's Berry Farm and you can still kind of get a glimpse of it from the outside. And that would be the classic Knott's Berry Farm stagecoach ride. Look at that back in the 50s. That is so cool looking. Running around on the outskirts of the farm. Out with the smell of the dirt and the grass. Just like in the old west. That must have been a pretty cool and pretty exciting thing to spot from the highway before you got into here. Well nowadays it kind of takes an eagle eye. But if you're willing to wait long enough you can still see the classic stagecoach ride outside of the park. But because the farm got so crowded with roller coasters, it's no longer in the dirt and the grass. But high up on a weird wooden highway up there. That is so awesome. Granted, that's much different looking than the scene that we saw from the 1950s, but hey, it's still here and that's pretty cool. All right, guys, it is time to make our way inside of Knott's Berry Farm. The attractions at the farm may have started out simply put a couple of wagons out there, build a volcano, build a rock garden or two. But by the 1940s, Walter Knott had become a building maniac when he started constructing his very own ghost town. And although a lot has changed out here in ghost town, somehow, some way, the essentials have remained very much unchanged for more than 75 years. This is so crazy. Comparing footage of Ghost Town today with a look back in 1956. We're talking 60 years later and that same familiar windmill is here. The old blacksmith shop complete with real live blacksmith. And even though they've been restored slash replaced, they still have an assay office out here and Wing Lee's Laundry. Still with laundry up on top. The mannequins that made these peak-ins so fun are gone now. But at least the buildings are still here. Hop Wing Lee and of course the barber shop. This one always had my very favorite gag. Pretty funny. I still can't figure out why they would have ever taken that one out. Well those characters inside may be gone but there's two characters hanging out on the side of the Gold Trails Hotel they can never get rid of. Because it just wouldn't be Ghost Town without Handsome Brady and Whiskey Bill. Oh man he's talking about us again. Dang it. Oh, you guys should know by now you'll never get rid of me. These guys are a Ghost Town institution and the wood behind them may have been replaced over the years. But as decade after decade of vintage photo can prove, no trip to Knott's Berry Farm was ever complete without a picture with Handsome Brady and Whiskey Bill. We even have some old video footage of these guys sitting here on this bench. And even though some of that film is more than 50 years old, I gotta say. These two fellas haven't aged a day. Handsome Brady, still handsome. And Whiskey Bill, still drinking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well these guys may not have changed much. And really, Main Street in Ghost Town hasn't changed changed too much either since the 1950s. But there's one building here that's changed quite a bit actually. And that's the old Silver Dollar Saloon. Now this building has been completely rebuilt too in recent years, but I gotta say they did a pretty good job with the outside. I mean comparing this modern view with the view of this place in May of 1961, you can see the basic outline of the building is still pretty much the same. Although they've definitely got the Silver Dollar on the wrong end of the sign up there. Ugh. That's kind of weird because they got it right on the other side. Anyway, that's just a little change 
change. The biggest change here, besides rebuilding the whole building, of course, is that instead of being a saloon where you could order drinks like it was back in the day, this place is now a shooting gallery. It's still set up like an old-fashioned saloon on the inside, and there's still some funny signs on the wall. But as you can see from this Orange County Archives photo from back in the day, it's still changed quite a bit. They're no longer serving juice of the grape and cherry in here, or any boysenberry punch, and uh, some of the less appropriate signs have been removed. But you can still have a pretty good rip roar and Simon. <laughs> Why do I keep doing that? Yes sir, all things considered, not too much has changed between this modern view and a view from the same angle in the mid 1960s. All of these buildings have been rebuilt. But if you really look at them, they've done a pretty dang good job of keeping them more or less true to the originals. I mean, consider that these are all wooden buildings, some of which were already really old when they were moved here. And a lot of the others were built with scrap lumber from really old buildings that were being torn down. It makes sense that 50 or 60 years of weathering, some of these buildings are gonna need replacing. There were a lot of crazy characters roaming around here in the mid 1960s. Look at that. Pretty cool that the drilling contest rock that you see in that picture is still at night. Knott's Berry Farm, although it's been moved from its original location just a little bit, and the sign, of course, has had to be replaced over the years. Those are the kinds of things that make you feel like you're visiting your grandparents' Knott's Berry Farm. Another blast from the past is the old Knott's Berry Farm wagon camp. It's definitely been upgraded with new seating arrangements, new sound, new lights, and even a new stage and a new show. But the essentials are all still here. You're still watching an old West show while sitting in an old covered wagon. So even though its appearance has changed somewhat since the the mid 1960s. I've got to say, that's still some classic Knott's Berry Farm in my mind. Alright, now you guys remember how I was saying this place didn't used to have a fence. It used to be free to come in, then you just pay for the rides or the merchandise. Well, it's kind of a funny story because the fence around the farm and the admission prices didn't start till 1968. And it wasn't because of claim jumpers, it was because of hippies. Since there was no fence around the farm, those darn freeloading hippies kept sneaking in here, camping out, doing all kinds of hippie stuff. So eventually, instead of just one Wandering back here from Mrs. Knott's Chicken Dinner Restaurant, they had to construct a fence and a whole entrance area of the park. But over here in Ghost Town, next to the stroller shop, is a little throwback. Look at this trestle up here. See the way this walkway is all covered up with plants? This is just sort of a little tiny throwback to an older, much longer version of this that led over towards Mrs. Knott's. And for more than 25 years, that's the way people would get into Ghost Town. Just sort of wandering over from Mrs. Knott's, past another one of those prospectors and burrow statues underneath covered walkways very similar to this. This is obviously a modern version of it with just a little bit of plants on top. But if you know where to look for it, that is a pretty cool piece of Knott's Berry Farm history. All right, everybody knows that ghost towns are full of miners. ERS, not kids. You just can't have a proper ghost town without miners. And you can't have miners without a mine. And one of the most famous, most classic parts of old Knott's Berry Farm was the original Knott's Berry Farm gold mine. Here it is in the mid 1960s, and here is the same view today. As you can see, if you look carefully, although the buildings have changed and new rock work was added to help incorporate the old mine shaft into the queue for Ghost Rider, some of the original rock work up and behind it is still the same, showing you that part of the original Knott's Berry Farm gold mine still remains. That old mining head frame and hoist was a very famous landmark in Knott's Berry Farm. You can see it from all over Ghost Town. And the shack right next door, I believe, was called Roy's Castle. Then you would enter this mine shaft here, make your way down through the gold mine, which I believe has largely been redone. But once you get down in here, there are some places where the looks might not give away how old it is, but the smell certainly would. And there's still one old timey peek in left down here on a side shaft. Nowadays, when you exit this mine shaft down here, you find yourself in line for Ghost Rider. The very large, very loud, very bumpy, kind of terrifying roller coaster whose construction wiped out a bunch of Knott's Berry Farm's history. Particularly down here near its lower half where the ride begins. Alongside the line for Ghost Rider, you can see this modern, brand new panning for gold stand located right here next to the modern exit of that mine shaft. About 50 years ago, if you were to enter 
enter that mine shaft up there and exit down here, you would have exited to a whole different area. The old Knott's Berry Farm Gold Mine Ravine. Where you could also pan for gold. But here where we have a simple booth, sort of surrounded by the line for a roller coaster back then, you would have had a whole man-made ravine down here surrounded by rock work, including the backside of that volcano we were talking about earlier. And most of it, just like that volcano, went the way of the dodo to make room for Ghost Rider. This is the area of Knott's Berry Farm I remember the most vividly from my childhood. Coming down into the old ravine that used to be here and watching people pan for real gold. Seriously, real gold. They had to give away over 500 ounces of gold every year. And the craziest part was Walter Knott would be buying that gold from actual prospectors that would still be out in the wilderness. According to legend, he'd have prospectors wandering in from the desert, bringing their sacks of gold and their six shooter here just to, you know, keep it safe. Selling real gold to Knott's Berry Farm to be panned. Now most of the old ravine was completely destroyed to make way for that part of Ghost Rider down there. And it's only very recently they've tipped their hat to history and actually put panning for gold back into its original area. But although the old Arastra that was out in front of the mine shaft and the old mine shacks are long gone, along with most of the old rock work in the ravine making way for Ghost Rider, you know where to look out here. You can still find gold. History gold. Simply come on down through the mine shaft, come through the exit. And when you get to the bottom, look out to your left. All the rock work that went out this way towards the volcano. Hey, there's the fire pit. All of that rock work was destroyed to make way for Ghost Rider over there and this Knott's Berry Farm cat licking himself over here. But although most of it's gone and the face, the entrance of it when you come into the Ghost Rider line has all been redone, if you look up behind the exit to the mine shaft, you can still see some of the original rock work. This is a crazy piece of basically secret Knott's Berry Farm history. Look closely at this picture taken of this side of the rocks in 1956. All that lower stuff is completely gone, including that cabin down there that was also a peek in into a miner's shack. All that colorful banded rock is now gone. The floor doesn't go nearly as far down. The mountain on the right is gone. The head frame on the left is gone. But if you look in the center of this photo, all the way up at the top, you can see the strange pointed rocks up there are still here today. That whole center saddle area, that whole little mountain up there in the middle is original Walter Knott old school Knott's Berry Farm gold mine mountains. Notice that tiny little force perspective mine shaft is still here to this very day, although it's missing the flume that water used to come out of. And although that wooden shack up there has also changed a lot in the last 50 years, it's in roughly the same area it was back in the past. This is all that's left of Walter Knott's original gold mining mountains. One last tiny precious part of Knott's Berry Farm history, mostly covered up with pine needles and hidden behind some very, very overgrown trees. This is the kind of stuff I live for. Rediscovering, at least for myself, hidden secret pieces of Knott's Berry Farm's original history. It's hard to imagine that now this is all that's left of what was a pretty massive themed area down here. I mean, that ravine, the hole, started just a few feet away from the entrance to the steakhouse there and went all the way down towards the building where Ghost Rider is. And this whole ravine was full of all kinds of people panning for gold. Real gold! As a matter of fact, I believe at one point an old prospect an employee down here was fired for filching some of the real gold. And I'm told that on average, back in the day, people would pull a dollar's worth of gold out of that panning area. I have no idea what a dollar's weight in gold in 1956 would be worth today, but I'm guessing a lot lot more than one dollar. As a matter of fact, I was just looking at this footage, looking at all the signs that you can see in the background here, which are pretty cool. And I noticed down at the bottom, in this shot anyway, it was only 25 cents a pan. Whoa, 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 hold up. Was that guy sniffing the water? He's a gold sniffer. All right, gang, I have a lot more vintage Knott's Berry Farm photos. And even some more vintage Knott's Berry Farm footage, although I'm always looking for more. But unfortunately, I've just plum run out of time to show it to y'all. I'm still doing more research and acquiring old historic photographs and film footage. So don't you worry, we'll have plenty more of Knott's Berry Farm's past to see in the future. But for now, them shadows are getting long, and it's time for us to hit the old dust. The trail. Well, thank you. I'm dead glad you decided to join us. In the old west. Check out.
out the links down below for all our merchandise. Hats and t-shirts and pins and patches and goodness knows what else coming. And then you'll have done your duty. And you can go home and sleep well. Isn't that right, Catawampus? Oh, you said it. I've been mining these nice berry farm mountains for nigh on 80 years and I ain't never found no nuggets except the ones I left in the shaft. You can still have a pretty good rip-roaring Simon. <laughs>